Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to show you Git commands that would really help you to use version control in your project. We will see what Git and GitHub is and how to use them in our project development. So if you are a beginner, then you should watch this video because by the end of this video, you will feel very comfortable of using Git commands through terminal. Also make sure you subscribe my channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one. So let's get started. All right, guys, let's start with a very basic question. What is Git? So it is a distributed version control, which help us in managing different versions of same file for later use. It is an open source system, so it's a free of cost to use. Git really helps in handling projects irrespective of complexity and size, works well with both small and large projects. Another great advantage of using Git is that it is fast and efficient to use. Git is very easy to learn and best lightweight version control system. Git is very popular among companies which work in teams as it helps to speed up the software development life cycle. Next, let's understand what is GitHub? So it is a code hosting platform that allows you to organize projects in the form of repositories. Git helps us maintain the code version and make it easy for collaboration with developers from anywhere in the world. GitHub is the largest open source platform for hosting repositories and it helps you to build complex projects easily with team collaboration. If you are a beginner, then GitHub is the best platform to host code repositories. Apart from that, GitHub also provides some very good collaboration features like access control, bug tracking and continuous integration. And on top of all these, GitHub offers its basic services free with no charges. You just need to create a GitHub account and you can create unlimited repositories and can have up to three collaborators per repository for free. This is how multiple people can work on different features of a same project at the same time easily and in an efficient manner using the combo of Git and GitHub. All right, so enough of this theoretical stuff. Let's jump to do some practical. All right, guys. So the first thing we need to do is we need to install Git on our local machine. So in order to install the Git on the machine, we will download the installer from the Git official website. So this is the official website of the Git. You can click here and you can download the installer based on the operating system that you are using. It is pretty straightforward. You just need to follow the instruction. If you need any help in installation, I have a video on it. Just click on the card above and jump to it. The next thing we will do is we are going to create a GitHub account. So let's go to the github.com and click on the sign up. When you click on the sign up, a form will appear. You just need to fill the form and you need to submit the form. Once you have submitted the form, you need to verify your account and boom, you are done. So we have the Git, we have the GitHub account. Let's go to the Visual Studio Code. And if we want to check that whether Git is installed on a machine or not, we can go to the terminal. And inside the terminal, I'm going to write Git hyphen hyphen version. And when I hit enter, then this is going to tell me the version of the Git that is installed on my machine. So now you can create an empty directory. I have already created an empty directory Git tutorial. And now I'm going to initialize Git on this empty directory. So if you want to initialize it, you just use Git in it. And this is going to initialize the Git version control system on this directory. Now let's create a new file here. So I'm going to use index dot html and i'm going to add some boilerplate code here i will change the title so i'm just going to change this title to git tutorial all right and if i want to see the status of this file then i can use git command as git status and this is going to give me the status of my file so right now my file is not tracked and it's showing in the red color so first I need to add this file so that it gets tracked. So in order to track this file, what you can do, you can actually use, I'm just going to clear this out and you can actually use git add and you can add the file name. So I can add the file name as index.html. 
and if I hit enter now if I check my status of the file then you will see that the status is in green color and it says that this particular file is ready for the commit so now I can actually commit this file so if you want to commit a file what you write you write git commit hyphen m which stands for message and you add the message I'm, I'm going to add an initial commit because this is my first commit so I'm going to add an initial commit all right and I'm going to hit enter so when I hit enter this particular change is now committed sometimes when you make the first commit or when you install or use the git first time you need you might need to set the profile a git profile so how you can do that you can actually I'm going to clear this and you can actually write git config so we are configuring the git profile so git config hyphen hyphen global and after global I'm going to do edit so if I hit enter then this is going to give this is my git configuration file which I have my name and my email address so what you can do you can actually set this for you so if you want to set your git configuration file you can do git config and then you can use global after global you can add your user dot name and you can actually write the username which you want and once you have added the username you can use the email as well for the email you can use email and you can write the email so this way you can actually add your git configurations all right so the next thing is now we have committed it now I want to see the logs of all my commits so for that you can use git log and this is going to log all the commits that I have made so this was my last commit the initial commit which I have made so now what I want to do is now I have created the file I have made some changes I have committed it but now I want to share this file with some other developers I need to host my code at some platform and that's where we are going to use the github so let's go to the github so this is my github and I'm going to click a new repository and I'm just going to name a repository as git tutorial all right and you can add a description this is a github tutorial repository all right you can make your repository public or private if you make a public it will be visible to everyone and if you make it private then it will only be visible to the peoples or the developers you add them as a collaborator all right you can also add a readme file where you can actually add the content of your project or the repository it has you can add a git ignore where this is a file where you add some some file names which will be ignored by the git like when you actually develop the projects we don't want that our node modules to get pushed to the uh, repository so we can exclude those node modules using the git ignore file which actually git ignores all the content which is present in the ignore file and then I can click on the create repository so this is going to create my repository all right so after creating the repository this is how it looks and we have to do one more additional stuff but recently github changed is master branch to the main branch so we have to change the master branch to the main branch using this command so this is what it's going to change our master to the main as a default branch so let's go back to the visual studio code and add it so right now if you see that we have a master branch here which i click then you will see that it's a master branch and we are changing it to the main branch so i'm going to hit enter so if i want to check i can do a git branch and i can check that my master changed to main all right the next thing we need to do is we need to link our local directory to the remote repository so that we can push our code from the local to the github repository we created so for that we have to do this command and we are going to add this command here and if i hit enter then it's actually going to link but i have already linked it before so you will see that it will say me that remote origin already exists and now next thing is we just need to push our code so to push our code we are going to use this git push hyphen u origin main and this is we are going to do only the first time we are doing the initial commit initial push but from next time onwards we just need to do a git push so i'm going to add this and i'm going to hit enter 
All right, so now my push is complete. So I have made the push to my main branch. Now let's go to the GitHub repository and check that whether the commit is already pushed or not. So if I go back here, then if I refresh my page, then we should be able to see our first commit. And I can see that we have our initial commit, which is this. And this is the changes that we have done on this particular file. Now let's do one thing. Let's add one more file. So I'm going to clear this out first. And the next thing what we are going to do is now that we have an, another developer who is working on this project. So what we can do is we want that no one should touch our main branch directly. Everyone should create their own branch and work on the features they want. So let's assume that I am a new developer and I have already this project set up. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my own branch, which I'm going to work on. So for that, I will do a git branch. And this git branch is going to show me the branch which I am currently using and I'm going to create a new branch. So for the creating a new branch, I'm going to do git branch feature and I'm going to create a product journey. So this is the new branch which I'm going to create. All right, so now I have created a new branch. Let's see the new branch is created or not. So we will use git branch and this is going to show me now we have two branch. So let's check out that feature branch. So now I have checked out my feature branch, but you can also do the creation of the branch and checking out in a one statement. So you can do git checkout hyphen V and you can write the branch name. I'm going to write a new branch. So let's add a new branch and if I hit enter then it's going to create a new branch and it's going to check out automatically. So now if we see that how many branches we have so we can do it via git branch and it's going to show us all the branches. Now let's make some changes in the product journey and let's push that code. So I'm going to check out the product journey and I'm going to hit enter. All right I'm going to clear it out. And now what I'm going to do to add a new file. So the person who is working on the uh, product journey is adding a new file and I'm just going to add some data here. So I'm going to add the margin zero. All right. And now this particular guy who is working on the product journey is going to push his code. So what he is going to do first is going to check the status. The status of the file and which is an untracked. So now he is going to add it. So let's add all the files and now he's going to do a commit hyphen M and he's going to add a style.css added. All right. And once it's added, it's going to push it to the, uh, to the product branch. So if I do a git push is going to say me that we have created this new feature product branch on our local, but it's not yet linked on the remote repository. So in order to do that, we are just going to do a copy this and we are going to paste this. So GitHub really helps us with a lot of uh, Git commands. So if I do it, then we will see that the particular code is now pushed. All right. So now our code is pushed and now let's go to the GitHub repository. So now I am in the GitHub repository and we should be able to see the new branch. So this is the main branch and this is the feature product branch which the other developer has created. So if we click on it, then we can see that he added the style.css, but you will notice that this style.css is not yet in the main branch. So what actually do once we develop all the features and then we merge the feature branch to the main branch. So let's see how we can actually do the merging of the feature branch to the main branch. All right. So now let's see on what branch we are. So we are in the feature branch and now we want to merge the feature branch to the main branch. So let's check out the main branch. So I'm going to check out git checkout main and I'm going to do a git merge of feature. So we need to merge the feature branch into the main branch. And if I hit enter, then it's going to merge the feature branch into main branch. And now the main branch is updated. Let's check the git status. So if we do the git status, 
we see that your branch is ahead one commit because we just now did a merge and let's do a simple git push. All right, so now we have pushed the code and now let's go to the uh, GitHub and now let's check it. So we are in the main branch right now. The main branch has only index.html. So now we have merged the code. So you can see that now we have both the files in the main. So that's how you actually do the merging. The other thing I want to show you is the stash, how to do the git stash. So suppose you are working on some directory. So what I'm going to do, suppose I am in the main directory and I am adding some files here. So I'm adding a uh, padding zero. So we are working on the main directory and now I want to go to the other branch. I want to save my changes here and I want to go to the other branch. What we can do, I can do a git status which will show me the status of my file. Then I can do a git add and after doing the git add, I want my changes to be saved. So what I can do, I can do a git stash. So now my work has been saved. You can see that saved working directory. So now the work is saved and now I can actually go to my other branch. So if I want to check out git checkout new branch, then I should be able to go to the new branch. So this is how if you want to switch a branch with saving your work, you can use the git stash. Now you have done your work on the new branch. You need to go back to your main branch and you want to work on the changes which you were doing before. So we can go directly. We can do git checkout and we can go to the main branch. So this is we are in the main branch and now we want the changes we were we have already made. So you can see that right now the branch is only showing margin zero, but uh, we have made a padding zero also. So we need to see the changes so we can do git stash and we need to pop out the stash. So that is going to give me back the changes which I was working on. So you can see that now we have the changes here. Next thing I want to show you is you can actually do a git log will show me all the list of my commits. So I have two commits right now and if I want to go to any of the commit and I want to see so I want to see what was the initial commit. So if I want to go to an any commit I can do a git checkout and you can check out the particular hash. So this was the hash. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to add this here and if I hit enter then I have a local changes. So for that what we can do, we can do a git status. We can do a git add. Then we can do a git stash. So this is going to save my work and now I can check out to a particular hash. So I will do a git log to find out the hash. Then I'm going to do a git checkout. And this is going to give me the hash. I want to go to this hash. So let's copy as add it and hit enter. So this is the hash or the initial commit which we had. Now you can see that in the initial commit we didn't commit it the style.css. So these are the commands which are really helpful and the most commonly you will be using is it either the individual project or you're working with some collaborators. But these are the get commands you need to you need to learn it. You need to buy heart it because these are going to be used very frequently. So I hope this video was very helpful to you in terms of the get commands using from the terminal. And if you like this video, a thumbs up is appreciated. Also make sure you subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so that you don't miss the videos like this one. And let me know in the comments how did you feel about this video. Does this video was helpful or not? And I will see you in the next video. Thank you. Thanks for watching.